Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story. I'll deal with complaints, but next time, you back my judgment. The second story. The lawyers tried to fight once they found out the pipage was not being used, but they couldn't fight it. The third story. I left my job because I was not appreciated as an employee, and after that the team dissolved. On to the first story. This is my story. I've been a fan of malicious compliance for a while, and it's never popped into my head that I actually have my own story. This was 16 odd years ago. So I used to work for a restaurant chain in the UK. I started out as a barman, but eventually got promoted to the point I was offered an assistant manager position at another unit. I had previously and am qualified in IT, so I take the job at what I now know is a ridiculously low wage of 16k a year. And yes, I could earn more in IT, but I really enjoy hospitality, so I just roll with it because I enjoyed the work. I settle in with a few hiccups, but because I'm really good at customer service, I sort of become the head of dealing with complaints. We would get emails from corporate, and I'd email or write letters back, usually without giving away free stuff which was the norm. Identifying the issue and explains what I would do to resolve it, as opposed to the usual just comp them. After a while, I'm manager on duty, and the restaurant is running fine, when we get a big table in. 10 plus people, everything's going fine, and the shift is running smoothly. I keep checking in with the party, not because my server is incompetent, but it's a big spend, and a huge tip for her, so I want everything to be okay. One of the party joins late, as in the rest of the table have their main meals. This guy I'll call Richard, I hope you get the reference, rocks in late and orders a rump steak medium well. No problems. I make sure the chefs get it out quick, and bear in mind by this time I'm also kitchen trained, so I know what's what, and I have a good rapport with the chefs. I take it out and before it even hits the table, Richard looks at me and says this steak isn't cooked medium rare and is overcooked. Okay sir, I say, I'll have a replacement out straight away. So I mosey back over to the grill, explain to chefs and they remake the meal. I take it back out and Richard looks satisfied and eats everything. The table have desserts, tighter drinking etc, and everything seems fine. Not the case. When it's bill time, the head of the table, instead of just asking for the bill, approaches me to pay. He's happy and just wants to pay so the others don't argue about who's paying or splitting etc. Richard however is not happy. He approaches and tells me he isn't being charged for his meal because he had to after the main table. I explain he came in late and then refused the first meal without even checking and that the fact that he was late he was never going to eat with them anyway but he's not having any of it. By this time everyone is listening and I confidently explain to him that he ate the meal and that I was not willing to comp it for his lateness and the fact that he hadn't even checked the first meal, just barked it wasn't good enough and wanted a new one, which we served and he ate. He insisted they wouldn't be charged. By this time I had been there a while, and I'm used to professional complainers, as I call them, and I'm having none of his nonsense. I regularly worked 60 plus hours a week, and on my wage it often put me on an hourly rate less than the servers and they got tips. I straight up tell him no, you pay or I'll call the police and report you for theft. It's your choice. The guy's paying is trying to resolve it, and he backs down and they pay and go on their way. All are happy bar Richard, and they tip the waitress generously. End of story. <laughs> nope. A few days later I get an email from corporate, then a personal phone call from my area manager. It goes along the lines of, why didn't you just comp him? He's complained to corporate and now they're comping the whole bill? Why would you do that for the cost of a rump steak dinner? I explain the situation and say, look, I'm in the right here. Back me up, please. Nope. I get in trouble. This is where malicious compliance comes in, and I can't believe I actually have a story here because I'm buzzing. For the next three whole weeks, the slightest complaint when I'm on duty. Comp the whole table, no matter how any or high the bill was. Three weeks. During this time, I stopped doing complaints from corporate, emails, etc. As I told my GM it's not my job, and that area manager had an issue with my complaints handling. I got a call from area manager begging me to stop comping tables as refunds were through the roof. Ultimatum, yeah sure I'll deal with complaints, but next time you back my judgment, as I have a pretty decent record. They gave in and I resumed normal duty, but it still makes me smile. The best part was I left for another company, and one day was visiting my old colleagues, and there was a new manager. She approached me as I was drinking in the bar side, talking to old regulars who love me, and asked me to return as they've heard great things about me, told them they couldn't afford me, and she said name your price, 25k minimum, and no more than 50 hours and they took me back in a heartbeat. 
Side note, as a manager, I had a waitress there at the beginning. We're together 16 years and married 13 this year. Eight kids. I think I won. Edit. Just to be clear, when I got promoted, it was by my GM, but the area manager was his uncle, who I knew longer, which is why I usually answered to him as I knew him, and he saw me up and coming, which is why I guess he put me in with the new GM as nephew. In the end, corporate in rare occasions now gives out comp, and it's usually passed on to the GM of the unit. Recently and all these years later, I left a review which was honest, and got a call. I spoke with the GM and stated I commented out of honesty, not looking for a credit, yet they took it so well and gave me 40 quid anyway, so I see they still have a budget, but it's on the unit manager now. The second story is... Lawyers think they can outplay an engineer, not on my watch. As this is my father's story and he works as an engineer for a city that shall not be named, I will not know everything, nor will I give any details as to the location or time that this happens. Cool? Cool. A few years ago, my father was working for a city as the leading civil engineer. His job was mostly about waste management and water systems for the entire city, though he does oversee all engineering projects. One day, my dad comes home looking utterly defeated, not his normal mood at all. I don't question it until the next day when the same thing happens. He explains the city needs new and expanded piping systems or they'll be sued. I don't know the charges nor the amount of money that was on the line. Two more days go by as the same thing happens. Tired and defeated, my dad thought there was no option but to make these changes. The changes would cost millions and would take months to plan and route. I honestly felt really bad. He had worked so hard for the city for years and now he was on the verge of being fired for something he didn't do. The old pipeline was planned and made decades before my dad got there. Now on to the malicious compliance. As a perspiring lawyer, it'll never happen. I wanted to look at the case and all the documents he had. I looked over them, reading super carefully. This subreddit made me think so hard on a way to maliciously comply. Then it hit me. The lawsuit stated it would be dropped if the new piping system was laid in. It never said anywhere in the case it had to be functional or used. Bingo. I told my dad about the wording, and we looked through multiple times again just to be safe. Once we had checked so many times we lost count, he set the plan into action. Long story short, the pipes were laid but never connected to the main sewage system. This saved millions in fees and other things for the city, saving my dad's job. The lawyers tried to fight it once they found out the pipage was not being used, but they couldn't fight it. I showed up to the court hearing to listen and watch. The opposing lawyers swore, pounded the table, popped multiple blood vessels I'm sure, and got so red in the face when they lost that they looked like actual cherries. So happy ending. Yay. My dad got a small bonus for the idea and he kept his job. I'm now 16 male and want to be an engineer like him. One day I hope to experience a story like this, just so I can post here again. Thank you all for reading and I hope you enjoyed this malicious compliance. Edit. Okay, I realize now how badly I messed up telling this story as I read comments. First of all, the city where this took place has an amazing water and septic system. The new updates that the people were suing for would have wasted public funding, even worse than our solution. The updates they wanted would benefit no one and just make the system more complicated. This new pipe system would screw up the already functional system and just cause problems. Now that I'm 16 and work as an intern slash assistant for a small engineering company, I can 100% say what my dad and I did was definitively the right move. The new sewage system and water system would have screwed up a lot of things. I cannot emphasize this point enough. The previous water system is amazing. There was no need to fix it, which was why we argued against it in the first place. The city this took place in has the third best water system in the state. I promise we do not worsen lives by doing this. Sorry for the confusion. The last story is... The Parmesan Cheese Incident. This story happened a few years ago when I worked for a supermarket chain that promotes organic food. I was hired to be the buyer for the specialty foods department, but I soon came to realize that they expected me to do the work of someone with a higher title for less pay. Our team was always short-staffed, and the few other workers always had excuses for doing less work, so it all got dumped on me. On this particular day, I was short-staffed and by myself from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. The store assistant manager, A.M., wandered up and announced, You need my help. You need more parm cheese out. I'll cut it. Now, first of all, while A.M. was a generally nice guy, he was the sort of inept person that made you wonder how the heck he made his way up to his position. He may have been good at customer service, but he had no skills whatsoever to help out in my department. He had tried helping in the past and had made a mess of things, so I learned my lesson there. The cheese in question is specially known as Parmigiano Reggiana. A full wheel is about 85 pounds. Anybody who works in the specialty cheese industry knows that you need a special set of tools to hand it out, as well as the skills needed. It's not a job for the novice, 
a new person must be trained, helped, and monitored. Also, a second person comes in handy to help flip an 85-pound wheel of cheese. I came to this job with years of experience, and I made a point to tell them during my interview that I cannot do this one job due to my arthritis. No problem, I was told other team members can do it. So I explained to AM that I had another coworker coming in at 2pm who was going to do it, because he knew how to do it and was good at it. AM still wanted to do it. I tried explaining that you need to use special tools to cut it, and special training, and I didn't have time to stop and show him how to do it. I'll figure it out, AM said. I tried asking AM to do a number of different easier tasks to help me out instead. No, I can cut the parm, AM said. I tried every diplomatic way to politely dissuade AM from doing this, but he insisted on doing it. I was overdue for my break, anyway, so I told myself to just let this happen. I returned from my break to see what happened. An entire 85-pound wheel of expensive cheese was absolutely butchered. It was done with maximal waste, and each individual piece was wrapped up for sale in a way that would be unacceptable by the company's standards. I shrugged my shoulders. It wasn't my mess and I had my own job to do, orders to place and time deadlines to place them. The next day I show up and I am immediately attacked by the department team leader. I calmly explain what happened, and she still wanted to blame me for it. She asked why I didn't take the time to train AM. I pointed out that I didn't have the time being short-staffed. She asked why I didn't take the time to rewrap, clean up and fix all the cheese. I pointed out how long that would take, and that I would get in trouble for working overtime. She insisted that she and I needed to have a meeting with the store manager immediately. Oh, they did pay me for overtime, they just weren't happy to do it. And you would get a big lecture about how it's supposedly easy for you to meet their never-ending expectations in the time given. So after talking it out and pleading my case in the store manager's office, the store manager graciously gave me permission to nicely and directly tell inexperienced supervisors to go away and not help in the future. My team leader later pulled me aside and apologized to me, but then she gave me a big condescending lecture about how I just wasn't doing a good enough job, and if I didn't get better I may get demoted or fired. Not long after that I gave my notice to work a new job at a lovely privately owned cheese shop where I was much happier, and my skills were truly appreciated. I don't have the energy or lawyer power to fight against a company that recently merged with another big company. Think next day delivery from A to Z. I just left as soon as I could. Not my circus, not my monkeys. After I left that job I heard from a salesperson that the team dissolved and the team leader got moved to another location. I don't know if it was a lateral move or a demotion, but the last time I shopped there it was all different people working there. High employee turnover is usually a red flag that people are miserable working there and soon leave, and that management is also bad. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.